I always wanted to have one at home, but if you've ever looked into these, they're really expensive. Um, there's two that I was looking at. One was advertised at $6,200, but after shipping and tax, it comes out to $9,600. Then there's one that's really nice, I really like the look of. That one's priced at $23,200, and after shipping and tax, that comes out to over $30,000. Plus the wait time is uh, six to eight weeks at minimum. So obviously, we decided to build our own, and it cost us less than $250 and that's with tax. Stick around to the end of the video, I'll do a thorough price breakdown. I'll show you guys all the materials that I used and how much everything costs. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So this isn't just a ping pong table, it's a water pong table for kids. Um, it's also a tanning bed. Hey, what's up? <laughs> it's an outdoor dining table. And Lindsay might disagree, but it's also a work of art. I'll go ahead and link this portable ping pong table net in the description. So if you want to support us, we greatly appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything extra to use our links, but it does help out the channel. We have more backyard builds coming up, so if you want to follow along, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> The first step is the foundation. I used 2x4s to create a frame to pour the concrete base. Just like with all of our projects, I'm using the standard 90 pound bag of Quickcrete. Each base is about 2 feet by 2 feet and 3.5 and inches deep, and I used about 8 bags for this. The foundation is the most important part since the concrete tops are heavy, so make sure your form is level. I have a video showing how to pour the concrete pavers and how to make concrete tabletops with detailed instructions, so I'll link those videos in the description. I waited 7 days to give the concrete adequate time to cure before we flipped them over. I did this with Lindsay, but she works out and is freakishly strong, so we were okay. Otherwise, I'd recommend having 3-4 to four adults to be safe. I started out by measuring and marking out where the cinder blocks would go. I'm using Type S mortar, which is basically cement mixed with an aggregate. In this case, the aggregate is sand. The aggregate in Quickcrete is, uh, for the tabletop is three quarter inch rock. Cement isn't very strong on its own, but when you add the sand uh, or rock or rebar, etc., that's what gives the concrete its true strength. This is Kyle. He's one of our subscribers who wanted to help out. He's also my sister-in-law's husband, and he's also very good at ping pong. Anyways, we initially used scrap 4x4s uh, so that the mortar would stay in place, but this didn't work out as well as we planned, so we ended up using extra cinder blocks, and, and that actually worked out perfectly. After we laid down the mortar, I just lightly tapped the cinder blocks using a rubber mallet until they're level. You can see for the second row, um, we're making sure to stagger the blocks. So the base layer has two full center blocks, but the second layer we're using a half block followed by a full block and then another half block. Staggering the blocks increases the strength and rigidity. Looks like the supervisors came out just to make sure we weren't slacking off. I ended up buying one 20 foot 3 8 inch rebar and cut them down to size with my uh, angle grinder. So now it's time to mix the quickcrete and pour it into the cinder blocks. For this part, you want to add more water to your mix so it's on the runny side. The easiest method for me was to use a 5 gallon bucket. When working with concrete, make sure you always use gloves and always use a mask. I prefer to use a respirator because I don't want this concrete dust getting in my lungs. Uh, 
After I let the concrete cure, I came back to add the stucco. I'm using the same type S spec mix for the rendering. Um, always when you're actually adding the stuff onto your center box, make sure you hose down the wall. Uh, this helps get rid of any dirt, but it also helps provide some moisture so the concrete doesn't dry up so quickly. Spraying the cinder blocks also helps the mortar stick. You'll have to play around with the mixture consistency. Um, you want it to be wet enough to spread onto the wall, but if you add too much water, it'll just fall right off. I would say try to err on the drier side, and if it doesn't feel right, you can always add a little more water to your mix. I'd say the trickiest part um, are the corners. You want to start at the corner and work your trowel inward. Expect some imperfections here, but the good thing is that you don't have to get this looking perfect, and you'll see why towards the end of the video. You have a lot of time to work with the concrete, so don't worry. Again, mix small batches, take your time, and before you know it, you'll be a pro. It was getting hot outside and I started getting pretty tired here, but thankfully Olive came to the rescue. She's actually uh, better at mixing concrete than I am. My kids are so cool. They're always curious about what I'm working on and they always want to help. Normally you render the wall in multiple layers. The first layer is called the scratch coat. You usually put on a thin coat, maybe about a quarter inch. Um, after that completely dries, you come back for a brown coat and then an additional coat if you want. I'm doing two coats for our barbecue, but for this ping pong table, I just ended up doing a heavy scratch coat and it actually turned out great. Now comes the finishing touch. After you wet your sponge, you wanna completely wring it out and then lightly go over the surface to bring out the aggregate or the sand in this case. Um, that'll help bring that up to the surface, it gives it a really nice texture and I went over the surface uh, gently over the corners again to soften the edges and this helps actually hide any errors that you made but really the imperfections are nice too because it gives it an organic look. Okay so we let the, um, the mortar, mortar or the stucco dry completely and Olive just finished painting the stucco white. We just used some exterior semi-gloss paint that we had and now, so we're pretty much done. The only thing is for another video, we're gonna use this polisher and these diamond bits to polish the top and we'll stain it and seal it. So now I'll go ahead and do a breakdown on the cost of all the materials. Um, I used 15 full six by eight by 16 cinder blocks at $1.54 each and that was a total of $23.10. I used six half blocks at $1.65 each for a total of $9.90. I used six cinder block caps at $1.54 each for a total of $9.24. I used one 20 foot 3 8 inch rebar for $7.23. I used one 4 by 8 sheet of melamine board $43.98. I reused the form to make two tabletops, otherwise if you want to make them at the same time, you'll have to purchase two of these. I used two bags of Type S spec mix for $9.73 each for a total of $19.46. And finally, I used 19 bags of 90 pound quickrete for $6.15 each for a total of $116.85. So the grand total was $229.76 plus tax, which was just under $247. One of our subscribers, AA, wanted to a uh, better look at the concrete borders we made in the last video, so here it is. Thanks again everyone for the support, thank you all for watching, if you enjoyed the video hit the like button and subscribe and we hope to see you on the next video.